For those of you who are learning to read music and learning to play the harp, I thought a video on key signatures might be really helpful. So today we're going to take a deep dive into the concept of key signatures and I'm going to show you how they work, how we organize them using the circle of fifths, and then how we can apply that knowledge to your lever harp in a very practical way. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Anne from Music Discoveries. So if you're eager to learn more about key signatures today, give my video a like and go get your harp so we can get started. I remember what it felt like to sit at a lever harp with what seemed like a random combination of levers flipped up and down. I had no idea what it meant and I was coming from a background where I could read music that looked like this at the piano. So I know it takes time to fully integrate the concept of key signatures and how to apply it to the lever harp. Let's start with a quick review of accidentals. Accidentals are sharps, flats, and naturals. Now, I know you're probably a harp player, but we're going to look at this concept on the piano, which is a little easier to visualize. So on the piano, here's a D. Now, if I raise the pitch by a half step, which is also known as a semitone, it becomes a D sharp. Let's go back to D. If I lower the pitch by a half step, it becomes a D flat. So sharps go up and flats go down. Now, here's an interesting situation. Look at this on the piano. So we just saw that when you start on D and go down a half step that goes to D flat, what happens if we start on C and go up a half step? Now that is a C sharp. Do you see how D flat and C sharp are two names for the very same key? Now those are called enharmonic equivalents, and that's gonna be important for you later on when it comes to tuning your harp. Now the reason this is tricky to show on the lever harp is that the lever only has two positions. So you either tune your string to a natural and raise it to make it sharp, or you tune your string to a flat and raise it to become natural. So we'll talk more about that when we talk about choosing a tuning for your harp. Now let's look at a piece of music. At the very beginning of the piece, you will always find the clef, the key signature, and the time signature. For those of you interested in theory and writing your own music, notice the order of these elements clef, key, time. They happen to be in alphabetical order. Also notice the key signature appears at the beginning of every line of music and the time signature is only shown at the very beginning of the piece. If you have been playing for a while, you probably know that if there's one sharp in the key signature, you need to raise or set all of your F levers before you begin to play. Maybe you even know that you're in the key of G, but why? Let's look at the circle of fifths for that answer. The circle of fifths is just a way of organizing key signatures. So you can start to see the relationship between keys. And you could think of it like a neighborhood where each key or each scale is a family. So now there are seven letters in the music alphabet, right? There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So potentially all seven of them could be sharp. You could have a key signature with seven sharps like this one. And potentially you could have all seven of them flat with a key signature that looks like this one. Now for practical pur purposes for us here at the lever harp, we are just gonna deal with key signatures up to four sharps and four flats. Now, why don't we get started? Let's jump into the, the circle of fifths and you'll see that uh, we'll start up at the top of the circle with the scale of C major. This, and probably from experience, you know that C major has no sharps and no flats. Now, if your harp is tuned to C major, then all of your levers will be down. So here I am, I'm gonna play my C major scale. Mm -hmm. 
right? And if you know a little bit about modes, you would also maybe know that this is the Ionian mode. If you want to dive a little deeper into modes, I'll put a link to my modes video and you can go check that out later. Now, the reason that the circle of fifths is called the circle of fifths is because we need to count up five letter names or five strings to find out what the next scale is. So we start on our C and count up five. One, two, three, four, five. Now that takes us to G. So our next key or our next scale will begin on G. Now have a listen to it and see what you notice. You hear that? That second last note, the F, didn't sound quite right, did it? That's because we need to raise the F to F sharp. So the key of G major has an F sharp in the key signature. So now listen to it, it should sound much better. Right, got it? So now I'm gonna raise all my Fs. So those are all done and my harp is now in G major. Now let's go to the next key in our circle. We need to count up five. That's why it's called the circle of fifths. So starting on G and I count one, two, three, four, five, taking us to a D. So let's have a listen here. Oh, that one, did you hear it? It was the C, I need to raise it. C becomes C sharp, and we now have two sharps in the key signature. We have F sharp, and we have C sharp. Let's keep going. So D, count up five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna finish putting all of my C sharps up. There we go. Let's do that again. D, count up five. One, two, three, four, five. Our next scale is A. There should be three sharps in A major, but I don't know what the third one is yet until we figure it out by ear. So let's do this. Oh, there it is. Second to last note there again, wasn't it? It was the G sharp. There, much better. So I'll go ahead and add all of my G sharps. A major has three sharps, F, C, and G. Now we have one more to go to complete our, our sharp side of the circle. So we'll start on A and count up five. One, two, three, four, five. That's E major is our scale with four sharps. So let's see where that one is. Oh, there it is. Again, the second to last note, that D raises to a D sharp. So now it sounds like. There we have it. And there's our sharp side of the circle of fifths complete. Now we figured all of that out by ear, didn't we? But now that you have the circle of fifths filled out and you're starting to see how the patterns work, you could commit this to memory. So remember, all you have to do is start at C and every time you count up five letter names, you're going to add one sharp. Now, I would suggest that you memorize the order that the sharps come in. Remember, we started with an F sharp and then the next one was C and then G and then D. So you could just create a little sentence or a little trick to help you remember that. The one that I use goes, fluffy cat get down. So if you're thinking, all right, D major has two sharps, which two levers do I raise? Well, it will be F and C for fluffy cat. Now let's talk about the left side of the circle of fifths. This is for the key signatures that use flats. And the way that we solve these is we count down by fives. So I'm gonna take my harp back to C major. I'll put all those levers back down, all those sharps down, and it will be tuned in C major. And so we count down five from C to find our, our first scale that has one flat. So here's C, that's one, two, three, four, five. All right, so that's F major. Let's hear what that is sounding like. Ready? Whoop. Did you hear that? That sounded funny, didn't it? Which one was that? That's F, G, A. It's that B, isn't it? Okay, well, in, in the other scales, we just raised the lever. So let's try that. Here we go. Oh, 
that didn't sound right either. You know why? It's because our B needs to be lowered to a B flat. And that is not possible with the way that I have my harp tuned right now. Remember we saw that on the piano, when you need a flat, you're lowering the pitch. And I cannot do that with my lever. I can only raise the pitch. So the solution is that I need to have my harp tuned to a B flat with a B flat in it to begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Let's see, I've got my, my tuning wrench ready to go. I've got my tuner ready to go. So right now, my B string is tuned as a B. I'm gonna go ahead and lower it. I'll, I'll um, loosen that string just a little bit until it goes to a B flat. There we go. All right, now the other thing that you need to know is that you may have a tuner that displays the pitches only in sharps. That's what's happening for me here. My pitches don't display in flat. So what I'm seeing here, I know that I'm tuning to a B flat, but my tuner is displaying A sharp. Remember we talked about enharmonic equivalence a little bit earlier? That's two names for the same pitch. B flat and A sharp are the same thing. So if that happens to you, if you've got a tuner that's displaying in sharps, you'll be tuning that string to A sharp. Same thing as a B flat. So let's see how that's sounding for us now. Much better, right? Now keep in mind, if you want to play in the key of C, that means that you have to raise your B lever to make it a B natural. So here's my C scale. Tricky, isn't it? Very neat. All right, so there we are. My harp is now tuned in F major with the B flats. Now that might be something that you want to do. So if you're currently tuning in C major and you've got levers on your Bs, then that, that's a step that you could take. You could go ahead and tune all of your Bs to B flats and that will open up your ability to play in F major and, and the related modes. So if you've been playing for a while, or if you've been to a harp gathering, you may have noticed that many people tune their harps to E flat major. So I brought my bigger harp over. This one's tuned to E flat major. And the reason we do that is to make it possible to play in a maximum number of keys. And so let's bring the circle of fifths back and you'll see how I do that and why. So we were, remember we were working in F major with the one flat and we count down by fives to find our next key. So let's do that. So F stepping down five, that's one, two, three, four, five. That's taking us to B. Now, wait a minute, Bs are flat, aren't they? Remember we made B flat in our tuning. So that means this key is really called the key of B flat major. And there are two flats. Now, I'm gonna tell you the trick right off the bat, what the trick is for the order of four flats. It's really easy, B-E-A-D. It simply spells bead. You just have to remember this random word, B-E-A-D. So the key of B flat major with two flats will have B flat and E flat. Let's go down another five. So one, two, three, four, five. There we are in E flat major with three flats. Remember the word bead? So the three flats are B, E, and A. And so these are the notes that I use when I tune my harp. So when I'm tuning, I'm working with E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, and E flat. Okay, so that's what you heard when all of my levers are down. So if you have levers on all of your strings, you could do this as well. You could tune to E flat major to really maximize the number of keys that you're able to play in. Now, to make our circle of fifths symmetrical, let's do one more key. That will take us to four flats. So we start on E and count down five. One, two, three, four, five, that's an A. 
but remember A's are already flat so it's A flat major and the four flats in the key signature are B E A D spells bead. So back to this E flat major tuning for just one little second. You probably are saying to yourself, well, I don't play with three flats in a key signature very often. And that is probably true. So if you are playing in the key of C major, then you need to know which levers to raise, don't you? So remember, so E flat major has three flats. The first one is B flat. So you go through and raise all of those B flats. So they are now B naturals. The E's get raised. So I raise all of those E flats to E naturals and the A's get raised. Where are they now? There they are. <laughs> It takes practice getting that. And you're going to learn to scan the pattern. So the pattern that I scanned quick, quickly to make sure I haven't made mistake is that I have a single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double, all good. And it takes practice. You really do have to work at uh, changing those levers accurately. Now I have just one more trick for you. And so don't go yet because this is really important. When you have a key signature, but you don't have a circle of fifths nearby, you may want to be able to identify what key you're in. So I have a little trick to make that really, really easy. Are you ready? So if you have a key signature, say like this one with two sharps, and you're wondering, okay, well, what key am I in? The trick is look at the last sharp and go up a letter name. So here we are, we have F and C for fluffy cat, right? So C, up one letter name, is D, you're in the key of D major. Here's another one. Here we are with three sharps. So we have F, C, and G for fluffy cat, get, all right? Remember, fluffy cat, get down, fluffy cat, get. So G, up a letter name, is A, this is the key of A major. So there's a quick little tip for naming sharp key signatures. Now, if you have a flat key signature like this one over here, what you do is name the second to last flat. So look over here, here's three flats. Now you probably know that this is E flat major. Hopefully you've got that memorized, but if you don't know it, if you're not sure, look at the three flats, go to the second to last one. Remember it's spelled bead, B-E-A, so the second last was E flat, that's E flat major. Now the only exception to the rule is this one because there is no second to last flat. You need to memorize that one flat is simply F major. If you would like to have a circle of fifths worksheet, then go down in the description down below the video here and you'll see a link for a free download. And I'll put a circle of fifths, a complete one for your reference. I'll put in one that you can fill out yourself so you can practice writing in the keys. And I'll include some worksheets so you can practice drawing key signatures and identifying key signatures too. That, uh, that link will just be in the description below the video. Video. Remember to click the notification bell so you get a notification when the next video in this series is ready for you. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.